Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Lost in Criterion, the show where I, Adam Glass, and my associate, John Patrick Dorgan, <laughs> we need to time that better, uh, talk about uh, talk about yes, the Criterion <laughs> releases. We're going in order of spine number in the collection. And Not important. This is number three, 1938 Hitchcock film, The Lady Vanishes. Uh, don't I mean this yes, is, is one of the last movies Hitchcock made before moving to America, and obviously when he moved into <laughs> moved to America, we they get said, into yeah, his more well known work, in all um, at least in America. Uh, <laughs> so this is this is you know prior to everything you know him for, <laughs> prior to Psycho, prior to The Birds, prior to yeah. prior to uh, Rear Window. But well, they, on a couple of the website I was reading about this, they really including Wikipedia, but some other ones, really implied that uh, this is the movie that made it so that Hitchcock could yeah, move to yeah. Hollywood. Okay. If it hadn't been for this film, we probably never would have heard of Hitchcock. Not because this film is important to us, but because this film was important to yeah. Hollywood. And allowed him to move, and so, you know, that's why we have the films, the Hitchcock films that we yeah. know, <laughs> is because he made this one that I had no idea about. It's true. It's true. I, I've never, obviously, I've never seen this before either. Um, and no. I'd, I'd heard about it. I've I heard the title. I guess that's, I say obviously. It's not obvious. I'm just using obviously as a placeholder. But let's stop meta commentarying on, on my speech patterns and <laughs> get back into this. This will be an interesting episode, given that it's our third episode. Our first, our first episode was on uh, the Grand Illusion. It's a very, very heavy movie, um, and we. Mm. Uh, we well, and the second one yes, wasn't any we less heavy. We talked for an hour on the first. We talked for uh, the second movie was Seven Samurai. It's it's three and a half hours long, and we managed to to pull an hour <laughs> on that movie, too. Um, I think we can get this one. I done think in 15 I think we minutes. may be we able really to uh, talk about this for fifteen minutes. So I apologize in advance if this is super short, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see how much argument we can get into and pad this out. Yeah, but th- but this is them the breaks. <laughs> them's the breaks. This is short. This is, short. This is a short movie and it's a light comedy. It's only uh, it's only ninety minutes long thereabouts, um, and it's it's certainly yeah. It's a romp, really. No, <laughs> it's it's yeah yeah. It's a non- it is. And very, very down on British people. <laughs> yes, yes, that is that is the principal the principal aspects of this movie is uh, it's a satire on British sensibilities. Uh, every every character, yeah. or at least every peripheral character, is a uh, stereotype of some sort of Britishness of of the nineteen thirties. Yeah, w- um, yeah, and that's I mean it's it's still great, and actually the the. Or a kooky yes. Italian. Or, or a stereotype. Yeah, but we have a we've kooky got, Italian. Got that Italian magician who just leers. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's everything. a lot of yeah. He just leers at everything. All the and there's time. a lot of great. I mean, it's it's well written and it's entertaining. I was definitely entertained by this movie. I really oh, yeah. love this. Movie. No, like that was the easiest. That was a very easy yeah. ninety minutes. Like not. And and I. And it's intense or stressful. I, I mentioned this. I have a tendency to, whenever we're discussing one of these movies, I watch it twice. And usually that's because I watch it once just to watch it, and then I watch it once to take notes. Um, and I watched this twice with, with two different people, um, and they both really loved it. And it's really, really light comedy and funny stuff, but at the same time, that kind of means it's not really saying much. <laughs> Yeah, like, I mean, it's a great movie. I mean, I wish I had a version with, uh, you know, subtitles so I could show yeah. people it around here. But, like, I mean, yeah, it's a great sort of comedy thriller, yeah, action. Yeah. Well, not really not action, action, but, but you know but what I mean. Comedy thriller. But, like, you you know, comedy, it's not just a pure comedy, but it's it's in the veins of, in the vein of, in the veins, in the vein of some other sort of semi-comedy, semi uh you know, suspense yeah, movies yeah. that I like, and yeah, it's 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 really but 
it's yeah, it's got nothing. It, I mean, there's not a lot of yeah. substance. Well, like like we said, it is a satire on on British sensibilities, and there's some really there's really great yes. aspects of it, like the uh, well, the setup of the movie, I suppose. Um, we we start in a mountain villa, um, in a fictional European country somewhere in the Alps. Um, what was the name of that? Do you remember? <laughs> Oh, it's like Bactiva yeah, or something, Bactiva but I think I just like mixed it's, the it's, actual it actually, name it with, sounds, like, with a with a skincare yeah, it sounds, product. Uh, I remember when I when I heard it. It's only mentioned like once in passing, um, yes. but it sounded almost Japanese in the way, the way they said it. Um, yeah, well, and like, but the, the the characters, the only characters who mention it afterwards, do it in the most like <laughs> ridiculous Dracula esque <laughs> voice. <laughs> yes. I've come to suck your blood in Bactiva. Mm, I can't yes. wait to just a second. Yes. I'm about to find it. Uh, the internet is hard. <laughs> you look that up, and we'll, uh, we'll I'll keep talking about yeah. the plot. I'll try not so, to talk uh, about uh, yeah. All our characters come together at this hotel uh, that's snowed in, and they're all getting on a train to get back to England in the morning. And um, so everyone kind of falls together, and we're introduced separately, and then they all come together on the train. And one of the characters we've met already very briefly, uh, everyone's already met very briefly, um, is Miss Froy, uh, who helps our main character, Lily, um, to, uh, Lily is hit on the head by a falling potted plant that was pushed out of the window that fell on her. Um, and Miss Froy, who has been a governess in this country and is finally returning to England, um, helps her and then disappears. And she is the lady who vanishes in our title. Um, did you find it yet, Pat? Yes. The name of the place is Bandrika. Bandrika. So not, not quite as, not quite yes. as Japanese so as I remember. I've come to what? suck your blood in there Bandrika. Go. Go. I believe is how yes. she said it. <laughs> I believe that's, um, a, that's a direct quote. From no, I'm pretty sure that their pronunciation was something like Bandrika. Bandrika. Yes. It was it was very dramatic in the, yeah. in the name. And that's and that's one interesting thing about this movie. Um, obviously, our our bad guys are all Italian and German, but they're never ever named as like bad things. Um, it's like and it's it's this whole pre war thing, and and we'll get into it with the plot, um, and and what I think might be the theme of this movie if there is one, uh, being made in nineteen thirty eight. Um, we never mention Germany or, or Italy outright. Um, and while our bad guys are very clearly, I mean, uh, the doctor has a German accent and, and a, a sort of Slavic name. Um, and the Italian magician who's in on the conspiracy and the Italian countess who's in on the conspiracy, uh, then a British woman who's in on the yeah. conspiracy and she, she switches sides and that's, that's a great plot point. Um, <laughs> but, uh, um, even even at the end, when we find out that Miss Roy uh, has a, a coded message for the English Foreign Office, uh, she she says that it it's about an alliance between two prominent European nations, and that's that's like the quote. I mean, she doesn't name them. Yeah. Um, so it's it's, and in a way, what I think the theme of the movie is. It's not a sat. It's not just a satire on British sensibilities, but it's a satire on the entire idea of the time of British appeasement. This you know peace in our time, Chamberlain thing. Um, but at the same time, the movie plays to that by not naming its enemies. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, like the film. So throughout yeah. throughout the movie, we get a bunch of British people ignoring the problems around them. And and then yeah. finally, and finally, it comes to a head, and one guy goes out to try and try and and says, "Oh, there's no way that they're evil. Uh, let's go, let's go reason for them." And he gets shot in the hand. Well, and he and and there's a very like a thing that they do several times in the movie where it's like, "This can't happen to us. Yes, We're British." Yes, exactly. Like and like. Not only is it a commentary on general, at the time, I assume, a general attitude among British people, especially if they travel yeah. abroad, but also, if you wanted to take it as a theme towards that, appe that air of appeasement, that nothing bad will happen to us, we're, 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 yes. we're, we're, we're yes. invincible. <laughs> like, we are, we don't get 
The Germans really? can't bomb our country. We've got the channel. <laughs> yeah. Right, exactly. Exactly. They won't invent <laughs> rockets. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, w I hope so. I, somebody would say that directly like that. <laughs> and I really, think, I really think that is the theme of this movie. If, if in anything, any Hitchcock movie is just kind of a thrill. It kind of exists. Uh, you know, what's the story yeah. of the birds? It's uh, fun to watch. I mean, the, 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 the main thing is just making yeah, it fun to watch. Yeah, it's absolutely fun to watch. It's, it's main. And, um, but, but if it is, if there is a theme, um, it's, it's that the British, you know, finally need to wake, wake up and get involved. Um, which... Which I guess could be yeah. say, said about the Americans at the same time, and was you know wake the sleeping giant, but um, but uh, at the same time, in not naming the enemies in the movie, it kind of plays to that too, because you know they're not they talk about an alliance between two European nations, but all of our bad guys, despite the doctor's you know use of soldiers and very very clear prominence uh, within a sort of military echelon. Um, they're not clearly acting as representatives of a government. So, so yeah. it kind of loses. If that is a theme, it kind of loses it in that you know we we still don't have a clear bad guy. We're not. We don't name Hitler in this movie. <laughs> right, and and you're kind of wondering, like, you know, when I watched it, I was not, as we've discussed in prior to the show, aware of the time period that the film <laughs> yes. was created. Yes. And, and that is so an important thing you I need to start looking up. <coughs> oh, sorry, I'm coughing. Um, I was not aware that this film was pre-World yeah. War II. So in my mind, I could see the connections to World War II, but at the same time, it felt to me like just the classic espionage, yeah. let's not, not name any and bad that, guys. Yeah. Let's, these are generic European country number one, is forming an alliance with generic European country yes. number two. And then we're here in this third um, very small country that no one's ever heard of. Which is named Bandrika. <laughs> now we're sounding Greek. Not <laughs> I, you know, I do my best. I'm not a professional. All right. But it is a fun movie, and there's a lot of... It's very... It's, it's technically well done, too, I think. Um, oh, yeah. Like that opening... Consider oh, our, 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 our sort of establishing shot of the mountain village is very clearly a model, obviously. And most of the train shots are very clear. Outside of the train shots are very well, clearly a model. But they go... Huh? It was a model, but it didn't reek of modelness. Like, you could tell it was a model, but it didn't yeah, feel like, yeah. oh my no, god, No, that's I'm why it was done so well. Like, we get this very really well long done. zoom that in... My window's open and there's a dog barking, so wait a second. Um, yeah. we, get, we get this very... Oh, uh, professional you know, podcasting right, right here. Um, we get this very... Uh, in a modern time, in a modern movie that had a budget, uh, it would be a helicopter shot. A helicopter really. shot. Oh, but it is it is it's, amazing considering yeah. like he considering that shot is impossible. Yeah. yeah. In his yeah, time absolutely. period. Absolutely. Or or so borderline impossible that probably people would have died it's, shooting it. Essentially, we like real. start on top of a mountain and we come down the mountain to the train covered in snow <laughs> yeah. and there's some guy standing there that. Uh, and that's where it really yeah. gives away that yeah. it's a model is the fact that the, the guys, guys don't, don't move. move for There's like, just a guy standing there holding a shovel, <laughs> like like halfway through, yeah. lifting some snow. And we kind of we we swing across the village and come down, and we're at the inn. And and the one moment where they try to animate it and try to try to clear us from and the, the car, car pulls across. across, but it's very you know it's got that jerky sort of thing on a string movement of the car. Well, and it's weird because, like, honestly, if they had not put in the people yeah. in the car, you would still know it was a model. It wouldn't feel as much as the a model. model. It would feel very weirdly quiet. Right. So I understand right. why but they would have put been the car. Okay. In, but it wouldn't. Yeah. But see, that would have made it more yeah. thrilling if it was just disturbingly quiet in this little chalet. Yeah, and we come we come all down that, and know. we 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 zoom in on the on the lit up window. And then do this dissolve, fade into the actual live action. Still outside the window, but now we're looking into the inn, and there's people, and they're doing stuff. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. pretty. It's a yeah, nice it's shot pretty. that, like, I understand what he wanted to do. And, like, yeah, as you said, these days it wouldn't have been yeah. a model. There was no reason yeah. for it to have been a model. Like, and these, uh, back then, there's every reason for it to Well, have unfortunately, been a model. these days it probably wouldn't have been CGI. Way to make it. But <laughs> that's true. But, like, you know, when you think about it, like, really, it's amazing that he th- even thought of a shot like that in a world where that shot was yeah. impossible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's a pretty amazing thing to, like, cook up an idea where you're having them be like, well, I really want to do this thing where we fly in from yes. outside. But we don't have a thing. What's it called that can fly? Just fall in from space. I mean, that we have... <laughs> it's, it's kind of what happens. Right. Like, I mean, it's like... Like, because, well, I mean, you got to think, like, he invented a helicopter shot without helicopters. Yeah, he said, you know what? I really want to do this... Okay, I'm imagining this thing with blades <laughs> flapping over top, <laughs> and I want to hook the camera to it so that I can zoom yeah. in. And it's like, sir, well, I mean, can we just make even, a model? Even if that, were, yeah, even if that were true, we couldn't really have done this with the helicopter because it would it would have to be such a seamless no, seamless connection. And right, and it would have had to not crash yes, into the building. Not crash into the buildings. And I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, Hitchcock's a very good editor as well. So, so he could have he could have pulled that off and made it look like one seamless shot, but. But at the same at the same time, yeah, there's yeah. that kind of maybe I just disproved my own point uh, in the fact that they just they zoom in on the window and then do this really really clear dissolve and then the shot of the window they dissolve into is kind of not it's off kilter from the shot they just dissolved from. Yeah. So it's it's just like, it's yeah, a couple but inches. I think he also had left. a budget, mm-hmm. so it, it feels it, it yeah. clearly it doesn't feel as natural as it could. I don't think, but yeah. Um, but yeah, and then. But you're right. It would have been CG these yeah. days. And then we introduced uh, we introduced everybody to uh, to our various British stereotypes. And the first ones we get are those two yeah, two oh, gentlemen, yeah. very Laurel, Laurel and Hardy. Oh man, I man, I just do nothing but walk past <laughs> these guys the entire <laughs> movie until like especially, the last yeah, like, especially half, in the opening film. Was it the last fifteen minutes? The last fifteen minutes where they like redeem yes. themselves a little bit by. Like defend, helping to defend, and like oh, once they believe yeah. that this thing is happening, yeah. they're they're you know good people, yeah. I guess they become. But like oh man, you spend like an hour being like, God, can I just smack a <laughs> sense into one yes. of these guys? It's, it's it's great, and they're great comedic characters too, um, because oh, you yeah. want to hit them, I think. <laughs> oh yeah, you spend the whole time just like get yeah. a grip, and, like they spend the whole, so much yeah, cricket yeah. talk. Yeah. Oh yeah, and and I love that. And one of the one of the reasons I think that it is kind of a theme here of, of British appeasement is that the first ten, fifteen minutes of them talking about cricket until they until they actually get on the phone and ask the guy who's called for his other for someone else who who they overhear is in London, they steal the phone away and and talk and ask him what the cricket scores were. And until we get that moment, they could be talking about war. Oh yeah, it sounds like yeah. they're like we're in a we're state of emergency. This is a crisis. Yeah. They're taking it so absurdly serious, and then you get into this like, then you finally find out what they're talking about. And you're like, they're talking about you cricket. Jerks. And they hang up on that yes. phone for that guy who's been waiting for an international call for like three yes. days or yes. something like that. Who, for all we know, is actually a really actually important yeah, person. Yeah, it could it could actually like, be legitimately important. We, and you just like we're fo- we're focusing on these two. Like Nincompoops. jerks or idiots, yeah, who are focused on cricket and they hang up a phone. Which, when you really think about the fact that they're talking about the eve of war, yeah. right? Yeah. And they even say like, it's possible that the man they hung up on is actually involved in yes. that. Yes. The really important yes. stuff, like the war, but like the the impending. They're war. not interested in that. But not in, not until no. last fifteen minutes. And no, they are they are ridiculous. They're great characters. Yeah. I it's, love them. It's interesting. I, and I also I don't think we're the only ones them. who love them um, because those two guys actually got their own spinoff movie where they're playing the same characters uh, a couple of years later. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I read that. I think I think on Wikipedia they said that. Um, I, I can't remember what it was called, and I've certainly never seen it. But they kind of established themselves as this uh, this duo from this movie and got their own spinoff. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Um, but they're really, well, they're really, you know, they're just, they're disconnected, and it's, it's, it's a very British. Every, everything's very British about this movie, but they're disconnected in oh, their own yeah. distinct, very British way. Um, 
and there's there's no room at the inn, so they get put into the maid's quarters, and the maid has to come and get her clothes out of out of there and change, and they're all very gentlemanly, and, and oh, we don't want to watch, oh, let's step outside. And they dress for dinner. They're snowed in at, at this random hotel in the Alps, and they put on tuxedos to go to dinner. Well, you know what's really amazing, though, is until we get on the train... I thought they were the main characters. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because I didn't know anything about the setup of the yeah. film. And I was like, are these yeah, guys? We fo- Is this a lore? I really thought it was like a lore. We definitely Har- we like, follow I, them. I thought this was a I thought it was legitimately just a comedy until we even got into the main events yes. of the train. We so I spent 20 minutes thinking they were the main characters. <laughs> no, I understand that. I Whatever. understand that. We kind of switch we 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 kind of switch focus earlier than that but at the same time it's just this it could just as well be a side scene to introduce someone else and right you're like okay so who's important yeah. here and that's and yeah, i everyone every is. so often found myself wishing that we would go back and then be the main characters <laughs> like the acting's good in yeah. the film and like the main character the, the lady's very good but i was like they were amusing as main yeah. characters yeah and so maybe that's why they got their own movie yeah and and everybody everybody's amusing in their own little way. Uh, Lily, Lily yeah. less so though, I think, because I the way Lily's introduced and she's supposed to be this, you know, uh, you know she's new money. Daddy wants a wants a coat of arms on the on the jam label. I think is what what she says. Yeah, but she's from America, so yeah. I often think like, why doesn't Daddy just draw a coat of arms <laughs> on the jam label? at the same time? Yeah, she's she, she's American. You can do she whatever seems you American. want. You can put anything. Though, though, actually, one yeah. of the guys I watched this with took issue when I when I said she was an American, um, and he viewed her more as, uh, um, like a Julie Andrews sort of accent, sort of just just a very mild Britishness. But I swear to God, they but I'm, she's pr- I'm pretty American, sure she's though. American, even if they don't say it. Out yeah, right. they do. They say she's yeah. American. Doesn't like the person at the end say she's American? Maybe, maybe. I can't remember. Now. I'm pretty no, sure you're... she's getting married to a British yeah. man. Yeah. For the co- not just for the yeah. co- for the the status of it, but, yes. I suppose. but she's she's got her money and she's but. with her girlfriends going on this adventure in the Swiss Alps and they're just you know skiing and paying <laughs> living on room service and uh, and then and then uh, the musicologist fellow I can't remember his name um, and apparently didn't write it down for some reason <laughs> despite the fact that he's a main character <laughs> he is. Uh, I'm- well, we got Gilbert. Gilbert, yes, and we got this this musicologist folklorist uh, who's who's upstairs, above her, uh, recording notes and playing music for a folk dance, a wedding dance. He says, which I I think he's lying about because why are there three people involved in a <laughs> wedding dance? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, my, it's a good yeah, question, Adam. Is the is the priest part of this folk dance? Is that what it is? <laughs> Um, right. But I think I, I, very, I couldn't, I couldn't tell even dance. watching this twice. I think the third man involved in the wedding dance is the hotel porter. He looks very similar. It's possible, um, but uh, but I don't remember. But he's, they're all they're all doing that, and it, it's very loud. And, and Lily Lily calls down to the to the front desk. What are you calling huh? her? Her name Lily. Her name is Iris. Iris. Why did I think it was Lily? It seems to be. I don't. I have know. no idea Flowers. what's going on in my head. I'm I'm confusing flowers. No, well, that's what Wikipedia tells me. It's I don't know for for whatever reason, all of my notes call her Lily. Um, wow, that's amazing. I you know what? I just call her she. She. <laughs> all right. Well, all um, the care- forgive me, I don't, listeners. I use it for exclusively that pronouns. Mistake. Um, Iris. In all my notes, the only the only proper noun in my notes is Alfred. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Um, so Iris uh, calls down to the front desk um, to to Boris. Uh, maybe that's what it was. Boris and Iris were too close, so I tr- I subconsciously made her made her a different name. His name is his name really his, Boris? His name really is Boris, or at least she calls him Boris. From, maybe, from, maybe it's her being an ass, but yeah, um, that's true. She's supposed to be American. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just assuming that everyone in this country is named Boris. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. Boris and whatever, like Grendel. Yes. yes. Uh, so she calls down and she she tells him to get rid of him, and and he goes up and and. Uh, she bribes him basically to get rid of get rid of Gilbert 
Um, not even basically. She outright bribes him to get rid of Gilbert. She gives him a whole bunch of money, and he goes and kicks him out, and then Gilbert comes to her room and, and insists that since he has no place to stay, he's going to have to stay there. Um, and that Right, because you can't... They're snowed in. Yeah. Like, where, where's he going to go? Yeah, exactly. Is he about exactly. died? So, she, so he, he annoys her into... Uh, taking <laughs> to to taking back her bribe or or at least telling him not to not to kick the guy out and getting his room back by just hanging out and telling her she can sleep in the bathtub and just being being me very <laughs> right, right. being a kind of an being, ass being a jerk <laughs> basically <completely>. um <laughs> but there is there is a really great shot there in that scene too um with the mirror just when he's in the bathroom oh yeah and, that's a weird yeah, shot yeah and she's she's standing in the doorway but she's in the mirror um, in the shot and the camera is like over her shoulder so it's the angle of that mirror just had to have been so weird (laughs) well or they did what I've heard of them doing where the mirror is not a mirror Mm -hmm. it's just a hole in the wall oh and they she stands on the other side and the person who's standing in front of the camera is a double it's just because it's all it's just a shoulder and a head of hair yeah that could have worked too it could be anybody yeah yeah, that's that's interesting. Because that that mirror angle would have been yeah. insane, maybe even impossible. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. That's a that's a great. Oh, huh, that's really interesting. Um, but yeah, they uh, that establishes them as hating each other, which clearly means that they'll be in love by the end of the movie because that's the sort of movie we're watching. Oh yeah, there's no mysteries there. Huh? <laughs> yeah, none at all. None. At Except all. for when you think they're not the main characters, and then <laughs> yes, you're like, "Oh, yes. I don't care about this." Uh, and we, I remember literally thinking, "I don't care about these people." Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you did because I didn't think they were the main characters. <laughs> well, that's. I mean, I I felt that way for the least focused upon British people in the movie. Uh, the uh, the guy having the affair, the barrister having the affair. Oh yeah. Um, and I like that in the opening credits they credit her as as Mrs. in quotes, to, to suggest that before we before we even find out that that she's not and she's just yeah, a mistress. I miss that. They put her name in quotes. Um, but I missed that completely. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, and then we meet Miss Froy. Well, we've actually already met Miss Froy. We we don't know her name for another twenty minutes, but um, uh, she uh, she was sitting with the with the two. British guys who are obsessed with cricket at dinner and offered them cheese and explained to them the country and then she comes yeah. and meets Iris um, and uh, they have a talk about, about folk music and, and there's the guy outside and in one of it's it's one of the weirdest <coughs> things Hitchcock does this in like every movie um, the folk singer outside is, is choked but there's something that only happens in Hitchcock films, as far as I can tell. Um, as soon the as shadows. no, as soon as Boy. someone's started to be choked, immediately their larynx is crushed. As soon as hands well. touch neck, sound stops. <laughs> Maybe in Hitchcock world, that's how things happen. Hey, you know what I just realized what? while you were talking? It was it came to me like a flash. Okay. I. I spent the entire movie and the time since then until now wondering why the this the minstrel was murdered. Yeah, I have no idea. He gave her the message. Oh, duh. He's the the relay. He's 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 playing the They just the missed song. the chance. The reason they have to kill her yes. is because they didn't stop him in time. Yes, duh. No, that wow. Dude, I it, it's been like <laughs> half a day. <laughs> You've, I've, I've, I've like, seen this tw- every time I I've watched it, this twice since last Sunday. I didn't think of that. Every time I thought about this movie, I was like, "Why on earth did they kill him? Yeah. There's no reason." And then I was like, oh. "Oh, duh, he's the messenger." Duh. Yeah, and you know what I just read? Yeah. It, you know what's really funny? What? I'm now reading the line in Wikipedia. Yeah. After I figured it out, <laughs> it was all right there. Yeah. I could have just looked. Could have. Uh, everybody's yeah. figured that out before us, and we're just dumb. Yeah, no, it's not a mystery. <laughs> it's not a mystery. <laughs> it's just I, we're both just dumb. Yes. Ah, well, that'll be great. I, I, yeah. so far in this movie, I messed up the main character's <laughs> name, um, even while watching it. Apparently, and uh, we missed we missed <laughs> what is amazing. really a significant plot point, <laughs> which explains <laughs> which, where she yeah. got the information. Yeah, which explains why there was a random dude murdered. <laughs> why they had to hunt her down yes. instead of just like yeah yeah. Yeah, it really makes the film a lot more coherent. Yeah, yeah, it does. Thanks. 
Thanks, Wikipedia. <laughs> well, and the thing is, is I didn't find it out from Wikipedia. Yeah, just, I was just thinking about it, and then, like, after I figured it out, I was, like, looking on Wikipedia, and sure enough, yeah. the answer is there. In retrospect, in it retrospect it's so clearly true that it's, and it's, oh, yeah. not, it's, not like, it's not like when watching the movie, I shouldn't have been able to figure that out. Do you think we're the victims of the fact that modern Hollywood filmmaking makes things like that so painfully clear? Maybe. That we're not attuned to figuring it out Maybe on that's our own? the... We can... Because we'll, it's pretty obvious. No, this is great, Pat. We'll blame society for our own shortcomings. Are we a, really, really sure? Yeah. Well, no, think about it. If you, if you made this... If you remade this movie, let's say... Let's say that, um... Who's that guy who makes all the, um... Michael Bay. Really bad action movie. <laughs> yeah, let's say Michael Bay made this movie. Michael Bay would never make this movie. The, the train doesn't blow up. Um. <laughs> well, uh, we, let's assume that the train blows up at the <laughs> okay. end. But no, I'm just saying, if you used, if you looked at most modern directors, they would have told you. Then that's I too feel. subtle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they're not going to get that. They're retarded. Yeah. yeah. Most of our audience can't pick up spoons. <laughs> Without using both hands. Spoons are hard, Pat. I feel really bad that I just used the word retarded in a derogatory way. I'm it's very okay. sorry. You can apologize, and you can be you can be sad. I but am let's, very let's sorry. Let's move on. Thank you for apologizing. Okay. It was very, very nice of you. We're sensitive people. All right. Now we've had our moment. Let's... Uh, yeah. Let's, let's move on to the fact that... Yeah. But let's yeah. get past the fact that we totally missed the plot of this film. <laughs> I know. By then. Yeah. Um... Uh, so anyway, they get to the, uh, yeah, as we said, they get on the train and Miss Preuss there asks to help look for a bag. Uh, Iris helps her and gets hit on the head by someone possibly trying to kill Miss Freud again, even though, uh, apparently it wouldn't have worked since Iris doesn't die. Um, I don't, yeah, I really wondered about that, like, except for the fact that the doctor could say, oh, well, she had yeah. a terminal brain injury or something. Yeah, but why are they planning, excuse. why are they planning for that contingency? There's just so much. No, 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 no. If they hit Mrs. Froy, then he could hospitalize her okay. and then kill her. Okay, okay. It would have been, it would have been way cleaner. But since, since they didn't, they've got Because he could just drug her and say, oh, she's totally out of it after that blow to the head. She has, you know. Yeah. Okay. Terminal brain broken. Yeah, that makes I sense. Need to go but there's just, but even still, even still, since that doesn't happen, they've they've killed the minstrel. Now they've got to kill Miss Froy. They missed with Miss Froy, so now they've got to convince Lily. She, or Iris, she's insane. I'm going to keep doing that. Um, it's um, okay. So so we've got it's just it's just this whole and then you know oh it's very complicated. Then they can't get it. Kind of in the way when he's foiled yeah. from getting getting Miss Froy off the off the uh, train. Um, she, uh, instead they just, just connect the train, and then they're going to kill all of these British, it just, it keeps growing, but at the same time, they've got all these contingencies, clearly either already in place, or so easily put into place. Right, they've already bought all these people that they can <laughs> easily, because, like, where did the Italian guys come from, and all that stuff, it's like, how did you get this many people on the train? You thought that she, she was going to be dead <laughs> before she got on the train. And, I mean, uh, How do you have this many agents on a train and they pay they pay he pays on screen after afterward that's true the that's italians true. so you know that that he doesn't necessarily have those agents in place already he's got the he's got the nun in place but like they're easily corrupted yeah. awfully easily corrupted yeah. well, maybe that's i i mean like come on well they are italian well, right. Is this supposed to be a commentary? I like, no I'm just idea. saying, it's like, some sort of terrible, this terrible stereotype of Italian. People. Like, I'm just saying. Like, I mean, like, would I don't know anybody on earth who is like, yeah, if you pay me a thousand dollars, I'll basically do anything you want. Yes, I'll pretend this person doesn't exist yes. and then help you murder her. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like, who exactly. are these people? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm a traveling musician slash worst human being on earth. It's true. That's, that's these are my two. Cre- look at my business card. It says it right here. Traveling musician, worst person on earth. Worst person on earth. I don't know. Is it? I mean, yes. The plot is fun to watch, but yeah. also insanely convoluted. Yes. Why didn't they just choke Mrs. Freud? <laughs> Since they are, they choked the minstrel. They clearly don't mind having dead bodies laying around. And it's uh, has Miss Freud been up all night, staying vigilant? Why not just kill her? Right, in her right. Sleep? <laughs> oh man, oh god! I wish this movie was made by like Quentin Tarantino. Because <laughs> like a scene with like 
Mrs. Freud with like two shotguns sitting in a rocking chair all night long. Oh, been the greatest thing in the history just of watching, watching the balcony window. Right, exactly. Or yeah, maybe sitting on her bed, one point at the window, one point at the door. Yes, yes. It'll be perfect. Right. It'll be perfect. Oh man, that's beautiful. Uh, um... <laughs> So we talked uh, we talked about that opening shot, which was great. But there's a there's another mm-hmm. some really great camera and and acting work while they're on the train because clearly, obviously, this wasn't filmed on a train. Um, yeah, I mean, even if it was filmed on a train set, it wasn't filmed on a moving train. Uh, all of the out <laughs> everything that we see outside of a train window is projected. Um, but you know what? They do a pretty good yeah. job. There's a couple like the scene where Gilbert goes outside. Yeah. Oh yeah, actually, yeah. like when they lean out the window, that fake. When they lean out the window, it looks great. Well, it's amazing because it, you know you've seen movies that were made twenty years later, where it doesn't where, look as great. Right, where they're like projecting it in a car, they're driving a car, and it's like, yeah. what happened here? It looks like we're driving on like, it's like, yeah, like it's like, but this looks oh, yeah. almost oh, real. It looks great. It looks almost. It looks great. It definitely looks great. And and and. Adding to that realism, I think there's a little bit of kind of sway in the camera whenever they're on the train in the hallway, and obviously everyone's Star Trekking it too, like moving back and forth, trying to yeah, yeah, make it look yeah. like they're they're trying to keep their footing. Um, <laughs> but but the camera's got a little slight sway too, so it really it really feels like they're on the train really well. Um, what? Yeah, it's it's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, like I don't know if he did that. Maybe they, maybe the set was on like rollers or something. Maybe, maybe. Who knows? I mean, they can do stuff like that. So. Yeah, certainly. It could, it could, it could happen. Yeah, that's probably what happened. Well, uh, we'll we'll pretend. Who knows? I'm yeah, sure. I'm sure convincing. Wikipedia has explained all of this as well. Um, <laughs> right. If you're wondering about the camera's <laughs> way, oh. Oh. Oops, we missed that part too. So we get we get through all that, and, and Miss Freud disappears, but not until after she's left enough evidence that that Lily can't possibly insane be insane. She's got her tea, and and she wrote her name on the window, but um, yeah, it's <laughs> so so we prove there's it's a all continuum. actually pretty flimsy evidence. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's all I mean, some total. The tea's the tea's a nice spot. I do like that Miss Roy tells her she needs a nice strong of tea, uh, cup of tea, but the only tea she has is herbal. <laughs> right, and and a million Mexicans drink it. A million Mexicans drink it, but it's not exactly strong. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you kind of wonder if Mrs. Freud does this really unique thing as like one of those. Yeah. Kind of like have to have a signature so people remember me yeah. need to remember me kind yeah. of thing yeah because so, so. otherwise I'm just an old lady yeah nobody remembers but at the, you know at the same time she needs to be that old lady so that she can disappear so right so it's kind of yeah yeah and uh, so you know Gilbert uh, Iris starts making a scene once once she disappears and all the Italians in the car say that they never saw her and uh, and Gilbert Gilbert's in the next car, watching more people dance, and taking more notes, and playing his... That playing. man has an amazing ability to just really get into that folk dancing, doesn't yes, he? Yes, he really loves folk dancing. He's traveling around, you know, he's got to be... His, I think he says his father's rich, so he's just kind of that that intellectual... You know, yeah, keep, he's even a caricature, keep, caricature yeah. of... Of oh, a yeah, certain type is. of British people too, yeah. isn't he? he? He's just you know he doesn't he doesn't need to worry about money, so he just travels around Europe and and doing a stuff. research project yes, where a, he's writing a book. Yes, a, a book that's not going to be out for another few years, and he's probably been working on for a few years. Um, yeah. Yes, the 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 the, the assumed book, um, the alleged book. Right, I, the, but we'll never see the light. <laughs> yes. Um, so, so he he also thinks that Iris is crazy because they hate each other, um, because they're not in love yet, uh, not until the end, um, and uh, so he gets he gets this German doctor or, or <coughs> who claims he's this German doctor who, who is a name that our intellectual recognizes as as prestigious, world renowned brain surgeon. surgeon. <laughs> I like it actually brings me. There's a lot of really little little quips at British politi- <laughs> politics in the movie too and and he says that he was he was working on a politician in Britain and Gilbert asks if he found anything 
and, and the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was says, a good well, one. there was an aneurysm or whatever, and, and, and Gilbert says, well, it was <laughs> better than nothing. Um, yeah. and actually, that reminds me of something Miss Roy said at the beginning when uh, our, our, our two cricket obsessed gentlemen are. Uh, are and, and, and as a little aside, were they sharing a single pair of pajamas? Because <laughs> there was a pair of pajamas hanging up, and then the, the taller guy had a shirt on. And the other guy only had pants on, and we never get a clear view of the pants. But I'm pretty sure they were the same pattern. Um, <laughs> but anyway, Ooh, that's a that's an awful idea. <laughs> I know, right? Thanks, thanks Adam. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm pretty sure it was true. It was really subtle, and I, I'm not suggesting that they were lovers. I don't mean to say that, and I don't think no. that there's any evidence of that in the movie besides <laughs> that possibility. Sure it's the same <laughs> but but it's just really really weird. That I think that's true. Anyway, when they're at dinner, um, and they're talking to Sparishy of, of our country, the country they're in, which is called... Uh, I forgot. <laughs> oh, I was, I was hoping you were saying... Andrika! Yes. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and Miss Freud says something about not, uh, never judge a nation by its politics. She says, after all, we English are honest by our nature, aren't we? Just, <laughs> just yeah, yeah, really yeah. subtle. Our politicians no, are no. honest. But we are, so yeah. you know you can't yeah, touch that, us by, by our I politics. really enjoyed that that yeah. clip. That was a nice one. Yeah, that was actually my favorite one. One of my favorite ones of the movie. Yeah, it's a, such a great line. Um, <laughs> so uh, eventually, eventually they find out that Miss Roy's been kidnapped and knocked out, and it's wrapped up the the burn patient that that the doctor has. Um, but they rescue her, and they rescue her in part because of our last British stereotype: the woman who will do anything for money. Except murder. Well, no, not except murder. She she's murdered for money before, but she's so British she'll do anything for money oh, as long as right. it's not against someone who's British. She only right. turns well, on the conspiracy when she finds out that Miss Froy is a Brit is, is, is a British. It's just so ridiculously British. Yes. Yes. No, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. That's, yeah. yeah, she's probably the least believable character in the whole film. <laughs> yeah, she really is. She really is. She's got this. Her heel face turned is is just so. so I don't know. It's she'll do. She'll murder anyone as long as she, as long as she doesn't suddenly find out that they're British citizens. Right and like, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any sense really. And like, yeah. I I don't know. I don't feel it was actually necessary. They could have just not had her be involved in the murdering part and be yeah. like, oh man, I'm not here to murder people. I thought yeah. we were kidnapping yeah. her or something. But at the, at I don't the, know, that, that doesn't seem well thought out. Yeah, but at the same time, I think it plays into, you know, this whole, um, my whole idea of it being about British appeasement, because we've got to, we've got to have all of the British people come together. And of course, they all do at tea time. That's the only reason any of the British people are still on the train once, once the cars are unhooked, <laughs> is that it's tea time, so they're all in the dining car. Right, right. Which is kind of interesting, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's hilarious and it's great. And uh, and then when well, and I like how like Mrs. What's her name, uh, Iris, is yeah. like, oh, it'll just be me and him. On, it's just me, us and him on the train. And like uh, then Gilbert's like, no, no, all the British people will be here. <laughs> no, it's four o'clock. Everybody's everybody's still here. <laughs> Everybody who's important, all the <laughs> they, British people are still here. And they walk they walk into they walk into the dining car, and sure enough, every every British character yeah. we've met. Is in the dining yeah. car, except for the you know the nur- the uh, the nun's not there yet, but she comes in very shortly. Um, she wants to be, but she's pretending to be a nun. Yeah, she's still she's still on the uh, she's still trying to uh, be fake. Actually, no, she's not because she's already been captured. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She's, but, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, she she's being held under. Gun- she's point, being right? held under gunpoint. <laughs> I like I like when I like when the doctor pulls the gun on Gilbert and and Iris. Because it's it, just the way he does it. It's very clearly. Oh, is that a gun in your pocket? Or are you happy to see me? Oh yeah, because <laughs> it's coming like, right out of like, right out of his hip. I literally <laughs> thought. Well, you, I and I didn't. Somehow I missed it. I'm pretty sure it was under a piece of fabric. <laughs> yes, it was. So I was like, I was like, <laughs> wait, what? Is he just using his finger? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> is this is this one of those things where he doesn't even have a gun? Yeah, but then he actually like, he actually pulls. Yeah, it. he has a gun, but yeah. Um, 
but yeah, is is the and then we get we get the climax and and Miss Froy passes along. <laughs> she she still doesn't want to admit to being a spy because she can't because well, well she doesn't like to call her, herself a spy because it's such a grim word. That's a great line. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and everybody comes together except for the except for the barrister who who still doesn't want to be involved with with anything because it's very it's very British not to be, it's not his problem. Um, Oh which, yeah, which is like, which is where everybody's at through the whole thing. It's not our problem. Yeah, um, and and everybody else comes to that realization that yes, this is our problem, except yeah. for him. Yeah, he's the and, only one who never realizes that we're all gonna die if yeah, we don't exactly. do something. And 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 that's again, again, why I think the theme of this movie is is to to push England into war to finally do something because he 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 takes the most direct route to appeasement. And he walks out waving a white flag, and they shoot him. And he says, "I don't, does I don't not understand." Go well. I don't understand. I don't understand. Are his dying words? Um, yeah. So it's it's you know he's the only one the only one who doesn't take up the fight, and he's he's a pansy for it apparently. Well, and then like, unfortunately, with the whole like this is all about British appeasement theory. Yeah. Is that his? I don't understand what his love affair where that would play into that analogy well I, I, it's just it's just a character it's now. just a character they thing be, they just have to yeah be well if I if I'm gonna accept a theme I want it whole hog okay I want, uh, <laughs> I right. want every I, this, I'm like, like a really crazy conspiracy theorist I want everything <laughs> to fit alright I, I understand where you're coming from I don't think we necessarily need it but I understand yeah, where you're well. coming from yeah well either way like I mean that's his whole motivation throughout the entire thing yeah. is he's gotta keep this secret and then yeah well it would ruin it, is, it would he, ruin him well, knowing he, the affair he is would ruin him definitely definitely a caricature on a certain type of person yeah and so I mean it definitely follows even if you don't accept the other theme about British appeasement he is definitely a satire yeah yeah but this man who's <laughs> desperately in love with this woman what like whenever they first met that they talk about yeah. and she's constantly talking about like oh you know you didn't used to be so careful and like you know he's just already clearly given up on the idea that he's ever going to yes. like do anything but just be her you know that she's just going to be anything but his mistress and yeah i do i do like the morality of the film for that too our bad guys yeah. are the people who murder but but even one of them can be redeemed um, yes and but then he's and, and then the adulterer um, yeah, the the male adult who refuses to uh, refuses to live up to, you know, he's he's not going to get a divorce. He's not going to, he's trying to he's yeah. trying to live a double life, and therefore he's the the real bad guy. Therefore, he's he's the bad guy, and he gets killed. Yeah. And then they steal the train, and they get back to Britain, and there's no, I mean, it's a half a you know a dozen British people have just stolen a train in a random country in Central and, Europe. And, like, drove it to the rest of Europe. <laughs> and drove it. I mean, no, their, their premise was they were getting back to the main line and then they'd make it over the border and it would be fine. And right. It's, like, it's like, not like they show up in London on the same train. I, I, I know, <laughs> but, like, it has a feel about that. that it, yeah, just like the way it cuts, it does feel like You that, know though. that they are going to not be in charge of this train forever. They're just getting across the border because even, like, the bad guys stop. Like, oh, that's too far yeah but like the thing is is like we don't know the name of any of these countries except for Pandrika yes and so like if she's intercepting messages between these two nations we have to assume that Pandrika is probably somewhere be- oh sorry Pandrika yes. is somewhere between them right yeah isn't it didn't they possibly just drive into one of the <laughs> other two nations yeah, probably probably like like, it's like we're between we're between I mean we're and that's that's a good point we haven't mentioned yet. Miss Freud refuses to to name what the two countries are that are conspiring, um, and and that's you know the the hole in my appeasement theory is that uh, is that they never actually outright name Hitler as the bad guy. Um, so so while yeah. while our bad guys are German and our bad guys are 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 Italian, Germany and Italy are never are never outright made out to be bad and even Miss Froy says between two British or between two foreign nations in Europe um, they never, yeah, never and, names them well and I also had a, a thing about that is like if you follow me on this okay? okay if you are a 
person working at, let's say, the railroad depot on the other side <laughs> okay. of that border, and a bunch of random British people drive an engine into your railroad <laughs> depot. It's driving half a train. Half a train. <laughs> that, that it's full of only British people, and it's full of bullet holes. How are you going to react? Yes. Because well, from what I can tell, they had no problems. <laughs> they had no problems. They just they got back, and the only the only problem was um, the our two guys were a little worried that they were be la- would were late, but they still caught the train they were meaning to catch as well. Yes, which everybody is got back to Britain on time, and and as we know, because because Iris's uh, fiance was waiting, um, they found out that the that the uh, Test match, the cricket match had been canceled anyway because of flood, so they don't, they're they're not out anything, and uh, yeah. they get back it's still on time, and no one, you know, no one's questioned this. They're right. not. It's like they're not in trouble. Yeah, they, they, we don't have any scenes where they're being interrogated. <laughs> you think there'd be at least some sort of debriefing at the foreign office or something? Right. They just stole a freaking train. <laughs> Stole a train. Like, I mean, yeah, they did it for a good reason, but it doesn't still, change they the stole fact a train. that they stole a train. Like, that's not there's, a thing you get away with. <laughs> there should be repercussions there, right? Or at least some, you know, investigation. Yeah, yeah. But we're not interested in that because we're interested in being back in Britain and Lily. Eh, Lily, I did it again. Iris doesn't see her. Uh, doesn't go to her fiance because she's in love. And Gilbert pops into her cab. Gilbert's very aggressive, by the way. Gilbert's a very aggressive sort of person. Oh, yeah. To a very he's, creepy degree, especially in the bedroom yeah. scene. Yeah, <laughs> he's... Like, I can see, though, in the bedroom scene, maybe he's just so Yeah, he's he's angry. got different he's got different motivations, but still, what he does in the bedroom scene is very... It's yeah. creepy, but at least I could see maybe you're just so pissed that you're just going to yeah, do something yeah. you would he never doesn't, do. He doesn't, doesn't care story. how creepy he looks because he's mad. Right, um, but then, like but, in the cab, yeah, or in yeah, the he car, just pops into the cab, and and then, but but of course, it's okay because she's in love with him now. Um, Wouldn't it have been a great scene if she weren't? She's like, get out yes. of the cab, get out. My fiance's doing here. There. But you know, see, at the same time, she wasn't marrying for love because she was only marrying because Daddy wanted the coat of arms. Um, Again, that he could have just drawn, <laughs> which he could have just drawn because he's American, and that's and how we work. It. Well, I mean, to be fair, yeah, it, it is. Yeah, it is. No, it's absolutely. It could have totally just was like, you know, this is the the royal jelly, and then yes. you know, whatever. Now we're done, and they they go to the foreign office, and Gilbert's now forgotten the song. Yes, but it's okay because someone's playing it on the piano inside. I really, I want to ask your opinion on this. When I heard that he forgot, didn't did you want it to be that way at the end? I kind of did. And I wanted it to end Apparently, with all in the, the short story that this is based off of, she really does die, but she's also really just an old lady. So this whole spy, <laughs> this whole spy outfit oh, really? doesn't. Yeah, yeah. From what I've read, um, <clears throat> so so the whole spy thing is is added by Hitchcock. Um, but uh, but she really does die in the original book. Um, but she's there at the end, Miss Roy playing the piano, and, and everyone's happy, and they all embrace, and, and they oh, get their hugs I know, it is, it is such a sticky sweet ending, and it really yeah. made me kind of oh, upset. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, especially coming from watching last week's um, Seven Samurai, where, where the ending is not nearly as happy as we want it to be, well, and or it even could so be. so confusing. <laughs> <laughs> and just confusing. We get well, to this, well, we get I to mean, this. It- this movie is a radical change from the first two movies. The first yeah. two movies we watch both have a very strong point to make and yeah. then also have an ending that is not quite satisfactory. Yeah. Really leaves you going, oh, man. Really that's, leaves, that's a it leaves an amb- ambiguity at the end. Both yeah. I mean, even with Grand Illusion, the way it ended, yeah, they escaped, but we everybody knows they're going right back into the war. Yeah. Whereas with this one, it's just like, and now we're all going to give ourselves a big group hug. And have well, a it, couple it really reminds me of the end of Hudson Hawk, which I know is a movie that you and I both love and no one else does. Yes, everybody um, else hates with a but passion. But when, when, uh, when uh, Bruce Willis' character's friend, I uh, can't, can't remember who plays him, oh, but I can't he shows, even, up, yeah. shows up at the end after going over a cliff in a 
a uh, limousine that's on fire and then <laughs> yeah. explodes. But that's and, supposed and, to be a jest. Yeah, it's like, a great, it's a great joke. But he, but he, he says, and, and Bruce Willis says, well, what about, what about, what about the fall? Airbags. What about the, what about the explosion? Fireproof back, to, back end. And yeah, Bruce Willis yeah. says, yeah, that's probably what happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, and, man. and we get that same very, very, without, I mean, obviously, Hudson Hawk puts the lampshade on it. Um, yeah. But but in this, we get that same sickly sweet ending of, of, oh, well, who cares why she's still alive or how she made it? She's there. It's great. Everyone's happy. Let's hug. And, and yeah. Britain got its secret message that's encoded in a song, and that doesn't make sense either. But... Well, uh, yeah. But yeah, I just have... <laughs> Yeah, that ending. Yeah, I found it a little upsetting. Just I didn't want like when he when I heard he forgot. I was like, oh, thank you, Alfred Hitchcock, for making a movie that actually like ends in this way. Yes. I was super happy actually. Like you know, I mean, that he forgot and, because I was like, oh, yes, a movie that oh, ends the way it should. Yes, he it, forgot. It really should. He and forgot it. Everything. And he forgot it in a nothing. moment of happiness. Yeah, and everything because, meant nothing. Yeah. And and that's a really great joke too, because because he forgets it in his moment of happiness, and what he starts whistling again, trying to remember it, is the wedding. <laughs> it's march. the wedding march, yeah. Um, and, and, and and that's that's beautiful. how it should happen. It's a great ending, and then and then she's like, left. oh, that's thanks, oh, Hitchcock. Everything's for, yeah, everything's good. And yeah. you know that's that's the nature of the movie anyway. It's, it's well, it's, yeah, it's but it would have been a comedy. really fun way to end it. In my mind, it would have been a fun way totally to end it in your mind, but you are you're cynical. That's <laughs> true. Well, yeah, but it would have been because it's all a big joke. I mean, the whole yeah. show is a the whole movie is a is basically at its heart a yeah. joke. Yeah. So in my mind, ending on a final punchline of oh, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, it would have been it, it would have been awesome. Punchline. It's a great Instead, punchline. we keep the happiness. Yeah. So uh, I, you're you're right there. You're absolutely right. But uh, we we did manage to actually get an hour out of this, surprisingly enough. Is it really? Um, well, I mean, well, we, it's actually longer uh, than the Seven Samurai episode. No, no. Oh wait, no, I mean, we're going to comment this. on this for a little bit, but we've got a little bit at the beginning. I started recording prior to uh, prior to when we actually started. Yeah, me started, too. So, um, but, uh, but yeah, still... definitely, definitely a really well, fun. It was movie. an enjoyable movie. Now the real yeah. question is: Will we will we be able to get an hour out of Armageddon? That's the... <laughs> That's we'll find question. out. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We've still got. Yeah. We've still got a few weeks to get there. Yeah, like a year, I think, actually. <laughs> so we'll yeah, well, I don't know what number it is. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for listening again. We'll see you next week. What's yeah. next week? Do we know? Next week is I have not looked it up. We are on. Let me, to, uh, let me look it up real quick. Amar Cord, which I cannot. I'm not pronouncing. Amar Cord from uh, Federico Fellini, 1973. Um, and I've never and seen it. I've never seen any Fellini. So this will be a wholly new experience for both of us, I think. Yes. Yeah, it should so be exciting. That'll be fun. See you next All week. All right. See you next week.